Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Rachel Paul. I'm so happy to be here with you today. We are going to be talking about how to stop yo-yo dieting. So if you feel like you are in the cycle of yo-yo dieting, I'm gonna help you stop doing that. We're gonna create long-term habits instead so you can immediately start changing your life. Okay, let's start talking about the 10 steps to stop yo-yo dieting. All right, step number one is to understand what yo-yo dieting does to your body. So I would talk about this with clients when I was seeing clients one-on-one -on -one because we would, it was important to understand what yo-yo dieting does to the body so that we can put an end to that yo-yo dieting pattern and create long-term habit changes instead. So what yo-yo dieting does to the body is over time, it leads to more weight gain, high blood pressure, diabetes, heart disease, higher belly fat, none of these good things. So what we wanna do is put an end to that yo-yo dieting pattern so we can avoid those outcomes. All right, let's talk about step number two. Step number two is to get clear on why yo-yo dieting doesn't work. So here is a fascinating statistic. One in three dieters will regain the weight that they lost and potentially even more weight. So it's important that we don't do any crash diets or try to take on any behaviors that are just not going to work in the long term because the research shows that crash dieters are going to regain that weight that they lost. So let's not do any crash diets, let's instead add on new habits that we can do for our lifetime. All right, let's talk about step number three. Step number three is to make a plan from love. Now you might see on social media that some people are saying if you want to lose weight at all, that means you have an eating disorder or you have some kind of disordered eating. But that's absolutely not true. You can make changes to improve your health and do it from a place of love. So think about the foods that you love, whether you love pasta, whether you love chocolate, whatever it is, total calories does matter most for weight loss and we just wanna be in a small calorie deficit to create those long-term habit changes. So you can include whatever foods you want to. So whether it's pasta, whether it's chocolate chips, you can make a plan ahead of time to include whatever foods you like, whatever foods that are the most emotionally satisfying to you. Okay, let's talk about step number four. Step number four is to create your plan the day before. So have you ever gotten to the end of the day and you've made so many decisions that day that you're too tired to then go into your kitchen, find something healthy to make and prepare it and take the time? It's just too much. You are not alone, that is totally normal. It's what's called decision fatigue. So we want to avoid this decision fatigue by making a plan of what you're going to eat the day before. This way you have all of your facilities ready, you can make the most healthy and realistic plan for yourself for the next day. So think about the day ahead, whether it's the weekend, whether it's during the week, what is going to be the most realistic plan for you to stick to? Make that plan the day before so you are set to go. All right, let's talk about step number five. Step number five is slow and steady weight loss for long-term habit changes. Now, I know you might be accustomed to hearing that you need to eat 1,200 calories per day to lose weight, or I've heard 1,000 calories per day to lose weight, but that's not true at all. What we wanna do is be in a small calorie deficit so we can really create those long-term habit changes versus crash dieting and then not be able to keep up with those crash diet changes, right? So I've been getting a lot of questions about how do I get my calorie deficit? How do I know what a 250 calorie deficit is for my body? What I recommend is using an app. I really like the Lose It app. I find that it's easy to use. There's not a lot of bells and whistles. So go through their steps of creating an account and setting your goal. And when they ask for how fast do you wanna lose your weight, opt for the one half pound option, which is a 250 calorie deficit. Okay, let's talk about the next step. Step number six is to focus on protein and fat at breakfast and snacks. So when I was going through my weight loss journey, I thought it was really best, especially in the morning and at snack time, to try to eat the lowest calorie foods. So like a slice of toast or a rice cake. 
And while those foods can be part of a healthy meal or snack for sure, those foods by themselves are not gonna keep you full for very long. So it's much better to eat protein and fat foods that are gonna keep you full for hours. So for example, I have two hard boiled eggs and two string cheeses here, it has some good protein and fats. I have some veggies and guac here as a great snack. The guacamole has the great fats. And I have a yogurt and nuts here. That's also both protein and fats gonna keep you full for hours. So try one of these instead of a slice of toast or a rice cake, it will keep you full for so much longer. All right, let's talk about the next step. Step number seven is to focus on my formula for lunch and dinner. So you wanna create your lunches and dinners with three or four ingredients. You want them to be simple so you can create those long-term habits, right? So for my formula, I recommend focusing on vegetables for volume. Vegetables are pretty low calories, so you can really eat a large volume of them. Protein and fat to keep you full. So the formula is specifically two or more cups of vegetables. So I have a salad here, so the base is the greens four to five ounces of protein. So I have some rotisserie shredded chicken here, and then 100 to 200 calories of fat. So I have feta and I have oil for the dressing. So again, just a few ingredients. It can go a long way and it'll keep you full for hours. Okay, let's talk about step eight. Step number eight is to make a plan for your higher carb foods. So published studies show that following an overall lower carb diet, I'm not talking about anything extreme, but following an overall lower carb diet does have a lot of health benefits. And also you are just more full, more physically satisfied when eating more protein and more higher fat foods. So what we wanna do is we just wanna make a plan for those higher carb foods the day before, right? So starches like pasta, alcohol, dessert, fruit, Think about your most satisfying foods in these different categories and just make a plan the day before of where you wanna eat them in your day. Okay, let's talk about step nine. Step number nine is to meal prep for success. Now, I know you might think when you think of the term meal prep that it means getting $200 worth of groceries and maybe having this bland plastic containers lined up of chicken and broccoli, but that is not true at all. A really good thing to do is to prep your proteins and vegetables specifically for the next two or three days, and the next two or three days only, because then you will keep your food as fresh as possible. I also recommend actually preparing your meals, combining your different ingredients and preparing your meals as close to when you're going to eat as possible. So if you are working from home, just prepare your very quick meals, your five, 10, 15 minute meals, right before you eat and you will really keep your food fresh and tasting good. All right, let's talk about step 10. Step number 10 is to practice mindful eating. Now, when I was going through my weight loss journey, I was truly afraid of trying to moderate, trying to eat all kind of different foods in small amounts because it just didn't feel doable for me. I really had this all or nothing mentality. But practicing mindful eating can be super helpful in learning how to moderate. So a really good thing to do is whenever you're eating, whether it's for a meal or for a snack, is to sit down and enjoy every single bite. Remember, no food is off limits. You can always have another food again. So whenever you feel full, you can stop eating because again, you can eat that food another time. No food is off limits. A good thing to do is to learn the hunger and fullness scale. So the hunger and fullness scale goes from one to 10, where one is starving and 10 is super stuffed. We wanna stay in the three to seven range where it's okay to get a little bit hungry. That's normal, that's healthy. And it's also okay to get a little bit full, but we don't wanna to get to any kind of extreme. All right, everyone, those were my steps on how to stop yo-yo dieting and create long-term habit changes instead. If you like this video, I'd love for you to like it, comment, subscribe, and ring that bell button so that you can be notified of our next videos, and I'll see you next time.